A new troop, the Super Miner, is being added in the Clash of Clans update. Let's tell you everything you need to know. This is unlocked at Town Hall 13 once you have your regular Miner upgraded to level 7. It is now the 15th Super Troop. How many before we should be allowed to boost more than two of them? I already think we are at that stage and I will explain why once we get into strategy for this troop. The special ability, Last Blast, which drops an exploding barrel when defeated was briefly introduced in yesterday's video when I gave you a general overview of the update. However, today I am allowed to go into a lot more depth for you on exactly how this works. These are the stats for the Super Miner at level 7, 8 and maximum level, level 9. Notice the damage per second, 200 to 600. And it is because it ramps up in damage, much like the Inferno Dragon. The damage when destroyed, which is the last blast special ability, is 1,800. To put this into perspective, a maxed level P.E.K.K.A, whilst it deals more than this in one strike, only does 680 damage per second. If we were to compare to a regular miner though, the main difference, which is typical with super troops, 24 housing space. So four times that of a regular miner. And if you were to multiply the stats of a max level miner by four, you would not be far off. 600 damage per second, which is the higher end of that ramping damage, you'd obviously have a lot more hit points, so you are relying on the last blast of the super miner, and also the fact that with the greater hit points, it does have a greater chance of surviving, and therefore you can heal it back up. Obviously, you did get to see a little bit of footage as I was discussing the stats, but it acts the same as a regular miner, burrowing under walls to get to its target. It does appear to attack a little bit faster after popping up at a new build Building, but the main difference is the last blast special ability. I was expecting more from the ramping damage, but seemingly four miners does a better job. And two tiles is the range of the last blast. You've seen in the last example, it missed the inferno. This time it hit it. Devastating damage, but only two tiles in range. One thing I was curious about was whether the last blast damage is impacted by a rage spell, because then we could just blimp a couple of these into the town hall and you're good. Doing exactly the same to the bottom inferno here, but using a rage when the miner goes down, you can see that it will not be impacted by the rage. Don't worry, when we get to strategy, you will see that the super miners are actually pretty good. Defense first. My initial reaction was, could we use this to counteract super archers, super wizards inside the battle blimp because they have low hit points? The last blast could wipe them out. However, it's not really that viable. It relies on your opponent not using an archer and pulling them elsewhere and also mistiming their invisibility so that the super miners can get closer. That does not mean they're not viable though, it's just for a different purpose. When you do a queen charge or a smash attack, you're driving those troops straight into the clan castle and therefore getting close to the super miners. Just look at the damage they do. Is it the best option? I don't think so. I would rather have troops that deal the damage in the first place rather than when they are taken out, but it gives us more options. The more variety you have in your defending CCs, the more likely you are able to defend because you you are unpredictable. Moving to strategy then, this one is not an option, but I know people will ask because I was curious about it. What happens if you drop a bunch of them in the battle blimp, maybe even clone them up on these stacked bases? Could you wipe them out? The answer is, ultimately, you'd be better off with a blizzard, super archers, yetis. They just don't give you the value that you would want. Failing this, I turned to the hybrid. I did two attacks on the developer build, one with the traditional miners and hog riders, and one implementing the super miners rather than the regular miners. Whilst this comparison happens, I will explain what I feel the main limitation of the super miners is, and then show you the best strategy after this. Now, at the start of the video, I mentioned 15 super troops, and you can only boost two of them. This is actually the biggest limitation of the super miner in my opinion because for the hybrid I like to take a super wall breaker and sneaky goblins and even if the super miners were a little bit better than the regular miners they would have to be significantly better for me to take them over one of those other super troops otherwise I could be better off 
creating the funnel cheaply and easily with the sneaky goblins, and war breakers are a given for the queen walk. So it's not actually as easy as a direct comparison between the two because you are limiting yourself if you take the super miners. I will just stick with my super wall breakers and sneaky goblins because with this comparison, they both came out pretty much the same. Now I tried to attack exactly the same. That's not always possible. But even when we compared the stats, four miners equaled around about the same as a super miner. So I'm not surprised that both of these strategies result in relatively the same outcome. Obviously, this is just my tiny example. It might be different when there's hybrid experts and millions of players testing, but if we could boost more than two super troops, maybe I would take them, but I will not be using them in a hybrid. But I will be using them, and it's kind of funny because throughout this video you've seen as I was testing the mechanics, I thought, well, they're not that good. But after chatting with Itsu, he said, try them following a blizzard. So here we go. You take heal spells with the super miners. So if you fly into a poison tower, just use one of those heal spells. And obviously you're trying to get good value from this. The town hall, the monolith is a good one to get as well because the super miners have high housing space and high hit points. So they are a bit more vulnerable to that. But as with any blizzard attack the more value you get obviously the better success you will have with the miners now i can take out the ice golems on this right hand side should have probably did that a little bit earlier but i figured the main advantage to the super miners was going to be the last blast and it's actually kind of the opposite because what the super miners i feel their main strength is is that they have so many hit points and you can heal them back up after that heal spell i don't think we lost a single miner yet whereas regular miners we would have slowly been having them picked off now you do have to try and create the pathing just like regular miners since they attack anything they are starting to split here so i'm going to use a healing spell across to that left hand side but as long as you keep the super miners healed, they have so many hit points that they just keep on going. My heroes can finish off the top of the base here. And although I didn't like them in the hybrid attack or I didn't prefer them, I think as a mass miner attack, you are fully taking advantage of the greater hit points by taking more of them essentially dropping the hog riders and just doubling down with the super miners you could do this following a queen charge but arguably the town hall the monolith everything like that is a bit more difficult to get be sure to subscribe tomorrow i will bring all of the information on the clan capital district what do you think of the super miners though that is how i will be using them and if you missed yesterday's video with the full update breakdown it is on your screen enjoy the rest of your day